All right, everybody, welcome to another CS302 assignment. And since we passed uh, the midterm, uh, we've been through all that link list content and all that, you know, pointer stuff and psych faults, all that fun stuff we've already um, encountered. So now we're going to take a little break and do something a bit easier. So the good news with this assignment is we're going to be using STL vector and STL unordered map, which are going to make life a lot easier. And of course, you'll appreciate uh, these um, STL types versus having to have to implement them manually. So in this uh, program, we're going to, I guess, implement um, a kind of a spell checker. Of course, as described in the PDF, it is mankind's worst invention because um, what happens as a result is we forget how to spell words sometimes. And it does happen, of course, during lectures, sometimes you can't spell certain words and, you know, that, that happens. So, but I guess spell checkers do help a bit. And this is not going to be a real true, uh, it's not going to be the best implementation of a spell checker. I believe a try or try tree is a better data structure to use as a spell checker. But, you know, we want to, we're currently now on unordered maps. You want to stick to that. So anyway, this is going to be a two part program. We have to submit two separate mains. They're going to be the same program, but they'll be using two different data structures. Let's go ahead and cover the uh, first one, the part A um, for this assignment. So in this program, we're going to be essentially spell checking a, a set of various files. So the first thing you're going to have is you have to read in a file called usa.txt, which is going to be um, an abridged uh, version of um, the American English uh, dictionary. It's going to contain all of the words. Let's go ahead and just check this out, what's contained inside this. So I'm going to use vim right here, so vim usa.txt. And they're all the words in English language or in American English language. So I just have a big list. I think it has 60,000 words. So it's a pretty big file. So we're going to be going through every single input file and trying to match it to a word in this list. So in part A, you want to load all of these into an unordered map. So I guess it depends on how you want to do it. But I'd recommend maybe using a, a string to Boolean. So string is your key, so the word will be the key. And Boolean true would imply that this is a valid word in the American English Dictionary. And if it maps to a false, that means it's not valid. So maybe if you use a bracket operator and it returns false, that means it was not a successful search. So you'll have to use the find function if you don't want to. So anyway, that's going to be the, um, the file you can, you can be given. And then what you're going to do is you're going to then read in a file that contains a set of text. So I believe one of my files, I think I have as Resident Evil 3. Let me just uh, see which, what it is, I think. Oh, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 3. So here's a uh, file that contains just essentially um, a set of um, words. And you want to spell check each word to make sure it's valid. So if let's say a word you look at does exist in the dictionary, then you don't want to do anything at all. If it doesn't exist, then that word is misspelled. So you want to output the word that was misspelled and then you want to give it a set of suggestions is the idea. So let's see. Um, so I think I pretty much have it here. So every word you want to verify if it is in the um, American English dictionary. Now, if it's not in the word, not in dictionary, sorry, what you want to do is you want to list out a set of suggested words. Now, this is not really the, the correct way of doing this, but I'm trying to have us do use um, unordered map assignments. So just sort of bear with me on this. So suppose you read the word dog in the file. Let's, let's just say for now that dog is not in the American English Dictionary for some reason. Then what you want to do is you want to come up with a bunch of other uh, words. So the first method is just change the first letter to all the possible um, letters. So AOG, BOG, COG, and EOG, and so forth, up to Z. Same thing for the second character, same thing for the third. So you want to create all of these possible, um, all these possible words like that. So that part is pretty simple. So just go through every letter A through Z for the first, second, and third, or, or how many characters the word contains. And then what you want to do is afterwards, you want to insert A through Z in between the word dog. So A through Z before the word dog, then between D and O, then between O and G, 
and then of course towards the end. So you want to create all these lists of words and then verify each of these if they are in the dictionary. If they are, then that would be um, a valid suggested word. So for example, when you create this big vector of words, which you, you want, of course, maybe store all these into a vector. And then you can, of course, can use a sort function to uh, sort the vector because you want to output the word sorted. So that way it's easier for the auto grader to uh, grade the assignment if they're sorted. So after you create this list of words, call the sort function, pass in the begin and iterator for the vector, and it's going to sort them alphabetically. And then you want to go through every single word one by one in this list of possible um, suggested words, and then check if each one of them are or are not in the dictionary. So for example, if you go through all these words, let's say if DOA is in dictionary, then you want to output that this is a possible suggested word. So you go through all these words and check each of them if they are in dictionary. If they are, output that this is a suggested word. You want to output a list of the suggested words sorted. Now, let's say if all possible suggested words are not in a dictionary, then of course you want to um, output for the word that was misspelled that there are no suggested words. Or let me just double check the output here. Yes, so then you output no suggestions in that case. So that's going to be the assignment. So pretty simple. And of course, you only want to spell check each word once. So for example, if the word dog appears multiple times in the um, in the um, text, you don't want to spell it, check it every single time, just spell it, check it once. So you may have to have more than one possible map one because you want to make sure that if you've seen this word before, you don't want to spell it, check it again. And another, you know, so of course, you may have to have you more than one map you may have to maintain, but that's not really a big issue. It's rather simple. So having more maps is not a big problem at all. So that's going to be what this assignment will encapsulate. And then the same thing you're going to do in part B, Except in part B, you're going to be using a vector, not um, and not um, what's it called um, an unordered map, and you will not be able to sort this vector. So you want to create sort of well, actually you're not going to worry about sorting because I guess the list already sorted for you. So. Um, but anyway, we want to compare this linear search as the idea. So, okay, so I got sort of confused for a second. So for part B, you did exactly the same assignment, except that you want to do your search using a linear search. So you would store your um, dictionary into a vector, not into unordered map. And then you have to do a find on a vector, but don't use a binary search. So use a linear search so you can compare and contrast um, essentially using a vector versus using an unordered map. That's sort of the idea. And of course, you might be able to even see a difference in terms of how the runtime will be affected by using a map versus using a vector. So it'll be the same program, but you have to just modify it a bit to store a vector of your dictionary and linear search. So every time you look at a word in the text, you have to linear search the word evil in the um, dictionary. So you can imagine it's going to be a lot slower runtime. That's going to be essentially it. Let's go ahead and now talk about the um, the uh, how to execute and run uh, this code. Okay, so again, to compile our code, I'm going to first just I'm going to test out the um, the map version first. So G plus plus, I think I called it main uh, map, which is going to use under map in this case compiles. Now we're going to read in our input using a command line argument. So the first argument will be usa.txt, which will be our dictionary. And then I'm going to um, pass in, I guess I'll use resident evil. So resident evil.txt. And it goes through all these. So it determined a few words are misspelled, which is interesting. Gameplay does seem to be a valid word, but they're misspelled. They're not in our dictionary. And we're not able, all the possible suggestions that we could have created from Capcom storyline and gameplay, those suggested words, none of those were in dictionary. So then it was actually not able to give any suggestions in that case. Let's look at um, Siphon Filter. This was actually a pretty cool game back on a PS1. I'm not sure if you played this game, but it's a pretty, pretty great uh, third person shooter. And 
it was fun. So it was one of the first games I had. One of the, one of the first few games I had for the PS1. The first one I had was Resident Evil 3. I also had Twisted Metal 4. And then, of course, later on I got Siphon Filter. So anyway, let's go ahead and just try out Siphon Filter. And here we go. So all the words in that text, uh, the word SCE was misspelled, but it was able to create a bunch of suggested words that these are all suggested words I was able to construct from SCE. And these all exist in the dictionaries. I'll put all of these. This word is misspelled. Logan, because Gabriel Logan's the name of the character. And it was able to create two suggested words that were in a dictionary. So I'll put those two. And of course, you know, there we are. So again, that's sort of um, how you run this. So the argument one would be the dictionary. Argument two is going to be the passage. You're going to try to spell check. That's really about it. Now let's go ahead and do the same thing for the um, the other version using the vector linear search approach. So you have G plus plus main uh, vec. Okay, so USA.txt. Let's try siphon filter. And if you notice, that actually ran a little bit slower. If you took, if you were able to see that, so we can see right there that it does make a little bit of a difference. So luckily. I don't think these um, uh, texts are too big, so it's not going to cause a huge problem. But you already saw right there that that was a bit slower than using unordered maps. So again, using a better data structure, using a map, is going to give you better results. So that's sort of what the exercise is mostly designed for. You also will probably notice that using a map will make your code even easier because all you're searching will be one line of code using the find or bracket or insert, whereas um, with a vector doing a search is going to be a little bit, it will feel redundant. So all your searches, even to search for duplicates, let's say if you seen the same word more than once that was misspelled, you have to search a vector of, of words you've already seen. And that's also going to be an overhead. So even coding wise will be a pain. So you will see that a map is actually so much better to use than a vector. So there's not much really say in this video. So there's not going to be any memory leak check, obviously, because STL just, you know, works. So of course, you have to comment your code, have header comments, and of course, make sure you implement the programs correctly. So for the map version, please on under the map and use the appropriate functions to have this constant lookup time. So our graders will look at your code to make sure that you follow the procedure on um, part A and part B. So that was about it. Um, hopefully this video gives you a little bit of an idea. So happy coding and till next time.